Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome uh, at our session about Mapatons. So we have here um, with us uh, Nicolas Chavon and Severin Ménard. Welcome. Um, they want to bring us a critical view on Mapatons, Mapatons, Mapatons. Give them a big applause to start the day. Okay, uh, thanks very much. Uh, we'll see if you will keep applauding at the end of the speech. Uh, hopefully, yes. Um, so the idea uh, that we had uh, by um, going for this Mapasen Mapasen um, talk was to um, to present uh, the history of uh, that form of collective mapping that uh, that happened in uh, in OpenStreetMap. But we're doing that from uh, a perspective which uh, which is ours, which is bit oriented, and uh, and so um, that's not a purely neutral way of looking at uh, at Mapathon. Um, Seth and I have been involved in the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team, and uh, we had disagreements on how things have to operate, which is perfectly healthy and sane in any organization and in OpenStreetMap. And the way that we're looking at things uh, derives from, uh, from that perspective. Uh, in terms of outline, uh, first we somehow inspired ourselves from Faulkner with uh, this Mapasson Mapasson. But the idea is to use it as uh, showing what's the first form of Mapathon, how it's uh, it appeared in the OpenStreetMap ecosystem. Then we saw gradually a second form of Mapathon, which is more or less the one that we're familiar with. And uh, hopefully, we're just going to keep working and improving Mapathons, and maybe a third form is going to emerge, which uh, will perhaps meet uh, some community requirements with respect to uh, the limits that at the moment we can see in Mapathon. So I'm going to let Seth uh, continue the talk now. So um, this document is public, and uh, so we will share the, um, the, the link uh, at the end. Um, so we'll start by a brief history of the Mapaton phenomenon, uh, aside uh, what is what's called and still called the, the mapping parties, in, uh, related to prison space OSM activities. So mapping parties was uh, at the very core of the very beginning in, uh, in OpenStreetMap, and um, some, uh, generally related to uh, uh, an activity involving the uh, field uh, collection. Um, regarding Mapaton, uh, about historical facts that you can actually uh, uh, find if you uh, just look on the wiki open street map about all the past events that have been made by uh, event organi organizers. Um, the first, very first Mapaton was uh, in Atlanta. It was 10 years ago, and uh, it was um, so Atlanta citywide Mapaton. And if you go to the, the wiki page, you can see that uh, it's, it was over several days involving uh, local people, data collection, etc. And also on a second occurrence, two years after in India, uh, same thing. Long, uh, long duration. And after that, the next occurrence is with the, uh, the disaster, natural disaster in Ayan in Nepal with the earthquake a few couple of years later. And um, with a humanitarian perspective. And then uh, a few after that, because it was involving so much people, so many people, and uh, it was a huge outreach for, for OpenStreetMap and created a lot of do, uh, data, even if uh, at that time there was already um, some um, um, data quality issues. The, the map had uh, multiplicated with now uh, very short duration events, like three couple of hours, three hours, typically uh, at the end of a, of a working day. So now, um, that said, let's have a look of this map pattern 2.0. I mean, the, what we have now. I mean, this, um, this, 
the scheme of uh, short-based uh, mapathon. So um, basically what it is, it's uh, a way to, make, to do information outreach, kind of demo of mapping uh, party type in events. And it's generally essentially a uh, directive uh, to the, for, for beginners. Um, regarding the map pattern in communication, so uh, the promise is that info outreach demo uh, involving so people to na generate natural disasters, creating data, and also uh, often like uh, local community engagement, apartment building especially what it's related to a connection with the local people, um, joining uh, the map pattern, uh, for example, collecting data like in um, field papers, things like that. Regarding the, the material of this, uh, of this map pattern scheme, sorry. You have, for example, this, this, uh, this documentation about two minutes to tell you how you, you, can, ha you can host uh, an open suite map pattern. So, and it's basically the communication is anyone can organize uh, a map pattern and you, you will be explained how to do it and you will be directed to uh, a few resources to organize that. And I just took uh, a f link to f some very recent events. That was in, in May, this one, up at the university, or this one in, um, was, I think it's even those days. Okay, so that's September 24th, yeah, that's no, two days. And you can see that's generally the end of the day, that's three hours long, this one is uh, also three hours long, involving you know, people, beginners, and uh, doing um, an archery things, uh, events, plus the, the, the data um, is to digitizing over imagery. Okay. So, now I would like to put this, um, this map pattern 2.0 scheme in, in questions. So on our, our perspective, it's uh, a powerful information archery, uh, outreach event, like into a first training, a demo, because it's only three hours for, for people to be involved in OpenStreetMap. On that, on that front, that be, can be useful as to, to, to put newcomers in OpenStreetMap. And we know that any newcomers, when you do a training, you will have some, uh, only 1% of the people that re really uh, like the thing, block the thing, and, and, stay, and stay active. That's not a, a problem for it. But we see the, the limits we, regarding, for example, the data quantity. I mean, the, the, I mean, the bulk of the data that it produces really uh, through these uh, short-term events is obviously uh, limited. And um, of course, there's a learning curve in OpenStreetMap and you cannot be effective within your first two uh, hours of, of mapping. That's um, kind of evident for everyone if you remember your, your first step as a mapper. And regarding the data quality, um, so I just put a few examples, uh, old ones, more recent ones, of, uh, of things that have been done through, uh, through map patterns. And I think as the data quality was not good in the beginning, it has, for example, never been um, <coughs> corrected, um, I would say, by the mappers themselves or the organizers. You have some, I mean, these mistakes, you have various type uh, of mistakes. Recently, in a, in a uh, discussion list, Emoma made some kind of typology of mistakes he, he found um, over the, the areas he, he monitors. 
And why have we this, um, this, this issue? Uh, because first, there is actually no prerequisite skills involved, both for the participants, okay, that's the beginners, but not even for the organizers. If you go back, for example, these two-minute tutorials, anyone can do it. And they, I mean, directly for uh, self-learning, uh, self-training uh, material, but actually anyone can do it. And, I mean, it's, um, it's no, not, uh, unfortunately, Many of the organizers are not skilled enough and not even very sensitized about the, the quality aspect. And generally, and even in this uh, two minute tutorial, there's absolutely nothing said about you should do data cleaning after you map it. And that's you, you map it, and the beginners will uh, certainly do mistakes. And uh, you need to. To, to clean that out. And, I mean, this, sorry, for this. And this, this scheme has been one of the two uh, reasons of uh, the OSMS establishing directing editing guidelines that are active from this year. The other reasons are the companies using OpenStreetMap uh, the way they want and not interactive with the, with the community. So, and I mean, for the people, more experienced people uh, involved in the long term for in, uh, in OpenStreetMap, uh, in the past, uh, we sometimes had to clean this kind of uh, the mess, like this one, that would take you really more time to clean that if you had to start from scratch. And now, a feeling that, okay, because of that, we have no a second burden, that the, do, the thing that could be done in a flexible way, not having guidelines to do it, because we, we could do the, the mapping in an effect, effective way, like organizing, um, directed editing, without causing and harming the, the OSM uh, database. Now we have that um, to, to handle. And yeah, thank you for uh, uh, map patent organizers that just let the mess and we know to, uh, have to to deal with uh, more uh, rules to 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 map okay and so uh, regarding the communication uh, community sorry engagement the supports and the building i mean as i mean we, we think it's uh, really uh, our could communicate because uh, you, you cannot build uh, community engagement uh, generally the way it, it, it's, it's done if you are just, for example, involving locals doing just a part of the, of the mapping uh, workflow. What's the benefits of this scheme? For OSM, outreach, yes, beginning newcomers, but not that much. Actually, um, generally, we all the the, the people involved as an uh, organization uh, or as individuals or individuals cleaning uh, the uh, working on the the same areas, they have to uh, now have a um, handle uh, so, uh, an extra charge of um, of um, dealing with the, the quality and uh, validating uh, all the data has been done. But for uh, the organization involved in my patent, uh, there's a clear, that's really a huge communication did uh, th uh, through this map pattern, okay. So um, we think that it really uh, helped them to increase their power and centrality within uh, all the what is called VTC, VGI, depends on the, it's more or less the same, same thing, that's uh, voluntary-based uh, uh, commu communities helping in the UMITAN field. And that's helped uh, the organization during this map pattern to, to appear as uh, the one creating uh, or 
uh, voluntary based uh, geodata for big stakeholders and funding orgs that will uh, give them funds to continue and other to, for, for their uh, other acti activities. And uh, also we, we think that uh, this kind of a instrumentalization of the OSM mappers and aiming at building for this organization and centrality. For example, uh, everyone be, uh, that participates to map attempt, use hot tools, etc., will be the volunteer of this organization, the hot uh, volunteers. The, they did a produce by the OSM contributors through a map pattern, through um, uh, the tools, for example, the, task, the, the tasking manager, the instance uh, held by HOT, becomes uh, they, the edits, uh, praying at the edits produce of a year, for example, even if you were just using actually uh, the tool without really knowing you want to, be, uh, to contribute to OpenStreetMap, we're not involved in a in a project, uh, and you didn't know about the project or the, or, or the, the people uh, uh, behind, but you will be inserted what you will do as a person, as a, a contributor. You edits will be uh, considered uh, incorporated in the, in the, I mean, the statistics. Uh, there's also a uh, worst case map pattern uh, for disaster responses. Uh, we had a, 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 a bad um, experience uh, with a Haiti cyclone Matthew, uh, Matthew in, in English, Matthew in, um, in uh, Haitian. That's many of the map pattern organized of, the, of these disasters of a disaster were not actually even uh, over the uh, affected areas, but it was uh, actually a mapping project sometimes already existing that would be useful for certain um, organization working on the field. So now, what could be map pattern 3.0? Maybe we can change, fix the semantic. That's map pattern related to marathon, et cetera. I don't, we don't think it's really uh, fit with uh, something that is just three hours long first. Improving data uh, quality. There's some proposed fix from uh, map pattern uh, holders. Uh, for example, establishing uh, chief data offices with that be very uh, the solution? I don't think so. Uh, for example, Google Maps had some people uh, caring about quality, but they dropped Google uh, Map Maker. Uh, vetting a text process for, for the map pattern leaders. I don't think it will be efficient. Uh, recently, Momai told me it was yesterday that they are really uh, they are uh, trying to uh, to test the uh, the AI to correct automatically newbie errors. I think, I mean, that we 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 are, as individual we want to 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 map um, and good, and produce good maps and good data. And it's not uh, the process to have someone producing bad data, a, a robot to correct it, and us, experienced mappers, are validating something that has been cleaned by a robot. We have other SMF guidelines now, just comply with that. It just required methodology, skills, and time. I tested that recently, I was in, uh, in Madagascar, to, to really to, to, to test the compliance to, uh, of these guidelines. It takes time. It takes more time. Uh, actually, uh, I discovered more things about uh, monitoring data quality, but it was uh, three days of data cleaning process over this area to have something uh, cleaned after that. So just forget. I will have a uh, two hours map pattern, and that, that's it. No, you have to, to care about the, the area, and it takes time, and it's not 
Uh, also, you cannot add it. You cannot do it just through the um, the task key manager. You need all uh, other tools, like, uh, for example, Osmos, to to do it. Communication. Please stick to the variety of the results. It's basically limited to sensitization to for newcomers of these minima patterns. Okay. It would be good to drop over communication and instrumentalization of contributors as I explained. So the, you are a de facto volunteer of uh, this map pattern, this organization. Please drop it. That's not a good way of attribute the, the, um, the contribution. Basically, we are OSM contributors. And same thing with the edits. Bring back our edits. When I use a tool, I'm not, I don't want that what I produce is supposedly um, part of what the, the tool holder uh, um, from the, the, the tool uh, provided by the holder. What could be done is promoting, promoting more OpenStreetMap in uh, all the communication. You can see all the links, and generally, OpenStreetMap is just a platform. Basically, uh, OpenStreetMap is, above all, a community. And there is nothing about how to join it. And also, promoting more the learning curve to provide useful contribution. It's not something like we, you can uh, learn just by reading some documents. It takes time for you to learn, to, to produce data, and to, to get something. This was, that's it. Sorry for the delay. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> it was interesting to hear, so it's good that you finished. Um, yeah, let's do first a clap, no? Um, interesting, interesting points you bring forward. Uh, do people have questions for them? Yeah, question over there. Yeah, it's good. Um, I wonder um, if you uh, have any, know of any studies about the effect of recruitment of the mappertons on uh, getting new mappers involved in OSM. Um, I mean, we all know that this is an assumption that there are some uh, mappers recruited at these events, but do you know of any substantial studies that uh, look at this in more depth and uh, provide solid data on this? Um, I really like someone uh, really good at uh, playing with statistics uh, with OSM, doing something like a really uh, a deep review of what has been done just to state that one, once for all. And I would say over the time it would be good to have us also break down by kind of events, by organizations, I mean, to, to give incentive or feedback for, to them. Because yes, it's, I mean, a broad, um, a broad feedback that generally we, we can provide, but really it would be very, very useful to have such, uh, such deep analysis of, uh, of contribution uh, uh, through my patterns. Yeah, and that's a good thing that we are hosted in, a, in an academic forum, so. That's clearly a series of topics that would be very interesting to, uh, to focus on, being very crisis or country specific, or then just looking at more general patterns. Uh, that would really be helpful in terms of framing what's the communication, which is suitable, so that's not to oversell anything and, uh, and stay true to the promises of uh, OSM in, uh, in that collective ways of doing it. Hi. Um, I think I agree with most of everything you presented. My only complaint is you didn't attribute me on that mailing list post, um, but you attributed other people. Um, <clears throat> Sorry. Can you speak louder? This is the first words I'm saying this morning, so okay. I'm sorry. No, I'm saying I, I think I agree with most everything you presented here. My only complaint is you didn't attribute me on the, uh, the mailing list post you have listed there. Um, joking. Um, I, oh, 
I think a lot of it is a communication issue and uh, do you think that it's possible just to iterate on the version number in order to present a different concept or do we need a new name for what these kinds of public engagement activities are? Should we go back to the label mapping party or do you have some other ideas for what we would call a new and improved um, events like these? Yeah, uh, so the attribution was there in the, in the, in the French version and uh, in the translation we forgot it. So, sorry, but we shall have, we shall have said Nisha. So, uh, but uh, no, yeah, really I think that one of the, of the first points uh, in terms of, uh, of steps, of first steps to, uh, to take is to, to get back to the semantics and, uh, well, reflect on what it usually was, what it started to be, shall we, at the beginning, when, uh, when we were throwing mapping parties, we were doing most of everything. There was a sort of unconference around OpenStreetMap, and then it had a tendency to focus on, on field mapping. And the map as now is kind of a, an outreach, sensibilization, and then a remote mapping party that can focus on creating data or running data quality. And uh, I think that what is... Uh, what is difficult there is that when you use the theme map as and you've got this marathon things in mind and the idea that it's lasting, that it's impactful in terms of data and basically this is misleading and since it's misleading on the short run that can spark interest from the people that are supporting us but then when they will just look at what the map as in that way it has been sold out is really delivering then we can face some, uh, some possible issues and, uh, and critics from people that we're supporting. And, um, and so I think that, yeah, that would be really cool to, uh, to try to relook at our practices and find ways to uh, define what is a, like, half a day, a couple of hours uh, mapping party working remotely on something on data creation or data quality and what can be something which is more important that will last really long and that is meant to, uh, to meet uh, standards in terms of volume of data, quality of data, uh, sort of uh, incubator of skills and, uh, and support for, uh, for capacities, uh, locally or remotely. And I think that would be really beneficial for all of us. Shall we do one last short question? Okay. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll try to be short. Um, my name's Dan. <laughs> I should say, my name's Dan. I'm involved in uh, the mapping parties in London. Um, I, I'm interested in this drop the volunteers de facto that you're um, suggesting. I see in London a lot of people coming in because they are volunteers. Uh, motivated by these organizations so it seems quite strange to to, to sort of try and exclude that mm -hmm. no I think that this is not uh, the idea is not to, to cut the volunteering side of getting into the things the the idea the, 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 the critic is more about the way that in communications certain organizations have a tendency to uh, call people that attend the, those events and that use certain tools uh, as a sort of volunteers or people from their communities without any formal agreement. Uh, I think that those organizations may try to learn from uh, uh, GIS, uh, GIS NGOs that have been active in the field like Map Actions or Carto NG, and they've got a status of volunteer, whereby you want to be a volunteer of that entity to act, then you've got a process whereby, in conscious, you're adhering as a volunteer to that group. And as a volunteer, well, you've got certain ways of behaving. It, it really depends on the organization. And uh, sometimes when you're just there is a crisis happening, you just want to do mapping, you're going to use the tasking manager. Myself, when I'm using tasking manager and I'm mapping in Ebola with Claire and Kapai, in a, I'm not 
creating data for the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team organization. I'm part of an OpenStreetMap response, and then I'm using that platform, and I may be quoted as a volunteer or as a member of that community when I was acting in a very specific way. I mean, this is the, this is the point that we're making, but not cutting the volunteering. And we are treasuring the fact that there is an interest and a motivation to bring to OpenStreetMap people uh, based on the, the, neat biz the, the neat work which is done by those organizations. As we said, we said, a mapathon, the way that has been promoted and the way that it, uh, it solidify is a very powerful outreach uh, and info sensibilization demo tool. That's something which is very, very good. And we can leverage on that. And basically that's the whole, the whole set of framing the, 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 the text, the, the, the semantics, and, uh, and trying to stick to true communications, if ever possible, would be a good way for OpenStreetMap and those groups just to, uh, to fully capture the potential of Mapathon. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, last big applause, yeah. Uh, thanks to you.